Hello, I'm Elle Edwards, the Mindset Geek from the Faith and Business Playground, and welcome back. Are joining us for a very special guest interview uh, version of the podcast. I was delighted to introduce Paul Jarvis here to the Go to Elf podcast. Okay, I promised Paul I wouldn't go all squee and fangirl, but I can't help myself because I've known, because I haven't known him, he's never spoken to me at all before today, but I followed him around the internet for like what feels like years. How many years ago did you design the first iteration of Alex Franzen's website? Mm, maybe six, five, six years ago. There you go. Well, I, feel, I feel like that was the first time. That, and did you do Danielle Laporte's website as well? Yes, I did. I worked with her for, I think, 12 or 13 years. Well, I remember one time, that's around the sort of the time, with her White Hot, Hot Truth website. That was the first time I was aware of your name. So I'm really excited to have Paul here today. Paul has an amazing book coming out in January called the Company of One, which we'll talk about more in a moment. But that's the reason why I get the chance to speak to him. But Paul, I'm going to stop rattling on. Introduce yourself to these lovely people. Tell us a bit more about you. Cool. So I'm Paul Jarvis. I am, I guess, an author and an entrepreneur. Um, been doing this for about 20 years now. And most of what I talk about, write about, think about is the idea that growth isn't always the best thing for a business. And that's actually what the book Company One is about, funnily <laughs> enough. So yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I do lots of things. I host podcasts, teach courses, uh, but mostly it's writing books and, and making software right now. So you don't do much web design at all anymore? I haven't done client work for probably four years or so. Wow. I mean, I kind of get your, day, your weekly emails, so I was aware that you're doing other stuff. I didn't realize, oh, that's exciting. Ah, okay, cool. So in, your, in a society that celebrates everything should be bigger and better, and we're told you know, we should supersize this and big that, and we're meant to have these big goals, and as you've already alluded to, your, your book is about you know, doing things a little bit differently. How do you personally resist this urge to go bigger and supersize everything? Yeah, I mean, it's tough. To, to be <laughs> I like your honesty. <laughs> it requires work. I think the biggest thing for me is I think that success is deeply personal. Mm -hmm. So I don't want the same success that somebody else has mm -hmm. because I don't think that would fit my values in my life and everything. And I think a lot of times we see people in the news or on the internet who are doing well and we're like, oh, I, I want to have that or like I want to be the next like Elon Musk or Oprah <laughs> or Marie Forleo or something like that. And those people have amazing lives, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. <laughs> but it's not necessarily the life that I would want. I just think about like watching Mark Zuckerberg um, in front of Congress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I, that, I, like a lot of people want to have a company as big as Facebook, right? But like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to have to sit in front of Congress <laughs> and answer weird questions from all white guys. Like, that just doesn't sound. No, <laughs> that's not like fun. I wouldn't make for a good day. <laughs> So, I mean, for me, like in terms of resisting bigger and more and that, I just like to think about like, what would enough be mm -hmm. for me? Like, what, why do I need more mm -hmm. if I, what I have is enough? And I think the problem there is that we all start and we all start a business without having enough because it's hard to start a business on day one and have enough yeah. revenue. To, I, I don't know how, I don't know how you could possibly no. do that. <laughs> so we all start in this mindset of needing to grow to have enough that's mm. efficient for our life, for a business, for everything. Mm. And we don't question along the way of this, like growing to have enough. Mm. Have we hit enough yet? Sure. And I think that's the, like, that's the whole point of the book. And that's the whole point of um, kind of my message in the world is that mm. maybe we can start to think about what enough is and yeah. reached it. How can we optimize for that instead of just, like mm. growing in all directions at all times. Yeah, because you're right. If you don't define what that enough is for you personally, then it's impossible, isn't it? You can't. Like you say, you don't know that you've even hit it. That's a, that's a really important point. And I think, yeah, yeah. Part of, one of my things is about like being yourself and just doing what's right for you. And so that idea of success on your own terms. I remember, I always forget, I must say it's Penelope Trump. Put Trump? Penelope Trump, years ago. I remember her, she, in a blog post, she called someone to pieces because this guy said, oh, I want to have the life, and she named somebody, I can't remember who it was, or do you actually want to have their lifestyle? Do you want to be sat in a room on your own writing eight hours a day? And he was like, oh, no, but it was Ashley Amberger, that's who he wanted to be. He said, do you want Ashley's life? And it was the, making the same point that you are, you know? It, yeah, do we really want to be in Congress? <laughs> yeah. 
even to your point about sitting and writing, a lot of people mm-hmm. tell me, oh, I'd love to write a book too. Mm-hmm. Like, how, how much do you enjoy writing? How much do you <laughs> do by yourself every day? Because mm-hmm. for me, I love that. Mm-hmm. I love taking months off from talking to other people and just sitting <laughs> down and writing. Yeah. And that to me, is, is a good time. Mm-hmm. But a lot of other people, that might not be a good time to them. They may want different things. So maybe writing a book for them in that mm-hmm. scenario isn't right. Yeah. So, we're sold this bill of goods that success looks this one specific way when in reality it looks however you want it to look. Of course. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And like your point with the book as well, of course, is we're told it, it has to be done this way, but there's more than one way to write a book. Like I am a bit of an extrovert and I can still write books, but I don't do it for eight hours a day. I would prefer to space it out. It's about doing it the way that works for you, you know? So I think, yeah, absolutely. So I have to ask this question. Do you have ever have days, and my, my personal favourite is Doctor Who, you know those days where you just feel, and I've had a lot of this this week, I'm just like, oh, I don't feel very well. And I had an excuse to down tools and watch Doctor Who because I had a cold. But those days where you just don't really want to, and you're just like, oh, what do you do on those days? Do you resist it? Do you power through? Do you have an alternative way of doing it? What does that look like for you? Yeah, I mean, if I'm, like, I'm a pretty driven person, and I know I work very hard. Mm-hmm. So I know that if I need a break, it's probably in my best interest to take a <laughs> I don't like this whole um, kind of mentality that we have to hustle oh, all yeah. the time at all times. Like I'm mm. not built for that. I'm mm. old. I don't like <laughs> handle hustling and sitting at a computer 16 hours a day. Mm. So I think that we need to find a balance. Like, mm. and we need to listen to our bodies. Like I feel like, my brain, like my brain is kind of what I have that makes me a good living. Mm-hmm. And so if I don't take care of my brain, which is in my body, sure, I'm not going to be able to keep doing that. <laughs> That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah, I'm very big on taking, and I, f- I feel like taking breaks are also very productive. Mm. Like I can't sit, like we're not machines. I can't mm. sit at a computer and just pump out writing yeah. for eight hours straight. Yeah. It just, just doesn't work. So yeah. I think taking breaks is a good thing. Um, mm. Listening to your body is a good thing. If you're feeling sick, mm. like if I'm starting to feel sick, that's when I'm going to take a break because mm. I know that if I can nip that in the bud, then I may not get sick. And yeah. then I'm not going to have to take time off then. <laughs> I'd rather take time off before and just sit and watch movies. So yeah, some days if I do want to just sit and watch Netflix, I'm going to mm. do it. Yeah. I know I know I work hard most of the time. I know I work yeah. hard when I have to work hard. So yeah. I would, I just don't want to work hard all the time. I feel like I would burn out mm. in that scenario. So I work hard when I'm working hard and then I try not yeah. to work hard all the other times. I don't like being busy to be honest. <laughs> yeah. I, if I'm busy all the time, I'm mm. not prioritizing my life or my business properly. Yeah. And that, and anti hustle. A friend of mine, we're gonna we're gonna establish anti hustle against well-known Mr. Gary V goes, oh my gosh, it drives me crazy. You know, we need to get a follower around the anti-hustle hustle movement instead because oh, he's a perfect example actually of somebody doing it his way and then suddenly this is the way. But anyway, I digress. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a blue, I mean, people like that say that this is like the blueprint for doing things. And oh. even with my book, there's, it's not a blueprint. It's just, yeah. here's one example of something that you should consider, not something yeah. you could do blindly. Yeah, totally. And I like that at the end of the chapters, actually, you, have, you, you, you make it idiot proof almost. Like, These are the things to think about. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what I just read. Okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> you almost think that maybe you planned it that way and did it on purpose. <laughs> so if you were starting again, because we've already said, you know, you've been doing this for 20 years and, you know, I followed around the internet for ages and you've iterated as you've gone. But if you were somebody, like, lots of my audience are quite new to this game. If you were starting again from where you are now, social media being what it is, you know, what would you what would you do differently what would you do the same you know any advice i guess um it's probably very egotistical but i wouldn't change much of how i think <laughs> and so to explain that um i would start with services first because services are faster to launch mm-hmm. oh if i wanted to make a product to sell them it would probably take me a few months to build a product alex franzen is actually a great example of that when she quit her job in radio broadcasting, the next day she emailed something like 60 people. That's right, yeah. 
hey, I'm now a freelancer. I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. This is the type of work I'm looking for. These are the type of clients I want. Mm -hmm. Are you that person or do you know somebody? And by the end of the week, she had three clients and those three clients mm -hmm. turned into three clients. And now she's booked like 37 years. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So there's personal connections reaching out one on one. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and so that's so the first point is I would start with something that I could get out the door very mm. quickly and start making money quickly. Mm. Second thing is I would lean on my network. Like I think mm. business is all about the connections you have with people and not just mm. those fake. Like it's not, you're not connecting with somebody if you're just liking their tweets. Yeah. <laughs> not actually a connection, I don't think. But like all of the things that have happened for good in my business have been because of connections, whether it's working with like fortune 100 companies or mm. selling products, mm. it's all personal connections. Wow. It's all, yeah. it's all just like, I don't know how to contact a company like Mercedes Benz and say, Hey, do you need any web work? Yeah. If I have somebody in my network or have somebody in my network that knows somebody that's yeah. like, Oh, I know this team at Mercedes yeah. are looking for somebody then I can make that connection. Yeah. So it's all about um, foster, and even for an introvert like me, I still work really hard mm. at fostering wow. connections with people because I know how important that is for business. Yeah. And it's interesting you mentioned Twitter, of course, because that's the only social platform you're on, isn't it? And has that always been the case? Have you ever dabbled anywhere else? No, I've never had, I had an Instagram account for a while and I really mm. just posted pictures of my rats. And <laughs> I just forgot that I had Instagram, so I didn't bother. Right. With it i've never had a facebook account or a linkedin account i just i might i feel like also my audience aren't as much on those platforms i feel like right. my audience and the people that i want to connect with are more on twitter so twitter's the platform i focus yeah. on it could be something different for somebody else oh yeah, absolutely yeah. I mean, it could be snapchat or whatsapp <laughs> or <laughs> yeah. these other things that haven't even been invented or we haven't heard of them because we're both too old and rubbish <laughs> But I think as well, you, I suspect that you've got to the point now, and Alex is like this as well, like she doesn't go on anywhere. I think you've got to the point now where, you know, email is your thing. You, you've got, what, how many thousand people? So people know how to reach you. And so, yeah, why would you go on all these places? I mean, I imagine there's a lot of people who are watching or listening to this. You know, oh, wow, I'd love not to be on Facebook, you know? And so, yeah. I wasn't on there to begin with. So it wasn't even <laughs> that I made the decision to quit when I got popular. It was just that I didn't... Yeah. I don't think it's necessary. Like I, I don't mm. think, and I also think we spread ourselves too thin thinking we have to do yeah. all of the things when it's hard to do all of the things when you work yeah. for yourself or when you're starting out. Yeah. I'd rather just do one thing well than five things really poorly. Yeah, and, and that's really good advice. And myself and have to hustle. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But unfortunately, <laughs> since the days when you started, Facebook have gamified it all now. So you have like Facebook groups and then we get, for me, like I would, I have like a love-hate relationship. There's days when I'd love to walk away. But then my thing is that I've got to know some really nice people in the groups. I'm like, oh, well, I'll stay there for the groups, you know, and they, they lure you in. But that's another, <laughs> another conversation. I think, uh, yeah, no, I don't know. Going back to your Company of One book. So what, other than reading your book, obviously, and we'll put links to the show notes, links in the show notes to Amazon and, and other places where you might be able to get it, but it's not out till January. So what, what advice would you have for people today who are listening to, you know, if they like this idea of maybe doing it a bit differently and deciding what enough is for them and building that, what advice would you have? Yeah, I would say probably start to think about a few things. I'm bad with advice, so my advice is always... <laughs> What you think about the yeah. <laughs> so I think probably four things that you should think about if you're starting. Um, the first is how you can be useful, right? Like I think mm -hmm. business is all about servitude. Like yeah. you serve somebody in mm -hmm. such a valuable way that they give you money. Yeah, money's a good thing to have when you're in business. <laughs> yeah. so figuring out how you can be useful, and like I mentioned uh, mm -hmm. a couple minutes ago, like if you start with services, typically that's easier because you can be useful faster. Mm. And you can also get to know your audience on a one-to-one -one basis because you're serving them one at a time. Yeah. Like Alex, perfect example of that. Danielle Port, when she started mm. um, White Hot Truth, she offered um, fire starter sessions. Right, yeah. She did something like 500. She's a, a beast in terms of the amount of <laughs> how well she works and how smart she is about business. But mm. she did something like 500 or 1,000 sessions. Mm. She got to know her audience so well by offering one-on-one -on -one services to people yeah. Yeah. that when she wrote Firestarter Sessions or any of her other books, they were wildly popular because 
Yeah. She knew her audience. Like she actually had conversations with hundreds of people in her audience. Yeah. Second thing is to give freely. I think there's this weird notion in business that everything needs to be patented or like you have to protect and hold your mm-hmm. idea secret. Yeah. I kind of think that that's bullshit. I think that everybody that's popular is popular because they've given yeah. most of the best ideas away for free because ideas aren't really worth anything. No. It's actually no. you go on them. How many oh, people yeah. have heard like, oh, I had the idea for Facebook or for Amazon? <laughs> yeah. Cool story, bro. But like. You yeah, had the idea, but you didn't do anything about it, so therefore it's worthless. Yeah. So even for me, like my, I give freely as much as I can with things like my newsletter. Mm. And that's the kind of thing, like I want to draw people closer to what I do, see if they're mm. a good fit for the things that they might want to buy. And most people buy from me, like four or five months after they've signed up for my newsletter. Right. So I just keep giving them content, showing them my weird and quirky personality, and then when they're ready to buy, they're gonna buy something. Yeah. So the second thing is give freely. Third thing is stay simple. I think there's this weird thing where people think that as you get successful, you have to add complexity to your business. Mm-hmm. I don't, th- I don't believe in that. I feel like I'm not smart enough to run a complicated business with complicated. <laughs> yeah. So I want everything in my business to be as simple and straightforward as mm-hmm. possible. I don't use complicated software. I don't really even use that much software. Mm. I like things to be easy because it's easier for me to run. It creates less expenses, less overhead. Yeah. And it's just, if I want to pivot, it's easier to pivot. If things are simple, I can just like take a few things and move them over to this pile as opposed to like, to- here's this like a yeah. thousand. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> uh, the fourth thing is that you have to keep track of everything. It's work. Yeah. Okay. You have to keep track of money in, money out, all your marketing efforts. Mm. You have to keep learning you have to keep track of your customers you have to keep track of everything it's but even if you do something creative mm. you still have to keep track of things it's still a business so by track do you mean like i mean obviously i understand tracking money in money out do you mean like lists of this is the blog post and this is the if people are on social media these are the social media posts or that sort of stuff or yeah but keep track of all the things that make sense i keep track of even things like um conversion rates if your newsletter um is if you're selling things on your newsletter or keep track mm. of stats that matter yeah. So that doesn't matter is the number of people that follow you on social media or the number of people on your mailing list. Mm. Those are not useful stats. Those are right. just metrics. If you keep track of things like engagement, like how many people open and click on your newsletter? How many people mm. reply to your newsletter? This is showing that people are engaged with it instead of just signing up and never opening an email. Mm. So I think keeping track of the things that matter and then determining what matters to you and your business is mm. probably the most important thing because there's so much that's just vanity stuff. Oh, yeah, totally. But this many followers on social media, this many newsletter subscribers. It's like, what's your open rate? What's your click rate? How many people reply? Huh? Yeah. Well, All that like, really boring advice that everyone says, oh yeah, but you nobody know, actually really wants to do it. But, uh, but it's fascinating, them, like, like money tracking. The number of people you speak to, they track their money. Oh, and their income grows. And it kind of goes back to what you said earlier on. If you don't know what success looks like for you, you don't know when you've, or what enough looks like, you don't know what you've hit it. Same with the money goals. If you don't track any of this stuff, you don't know when you, you could have made, I don't know, 10,000 pounds and you're like, oh, oh, look, I didn't realize that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Oh, I like it. So do you have, do you, do you have, have, you sometimes have people that support you and stuff that you're not like literally doing everything yourself? Oh, hell no. I <laughs> know how to do, like, I don't know how to do accounting. I'm good at making money. I'm not good at tracking <laughs> yeah. money and figuring out how much I owe the government. Mm, so I have, I have a corporate lawyer, an accountant, a copy editor, an editor, um, podcast producer, partners for all of my projects. Um, but I hire people pretty much entirely freelance and I mm-hmm. hire people that I don't have to manage. Right. I'd rather pay more for somebody who's really good at what they do mm. than have to than pay than find somebody on say Fiverr or something like that where I have yeah. to tell them what to do at all times. Got it. I don't yeah. want to manage people. Like really in my life, I don't want yeah. to manage people. <laughs> I think you, you mentioned that in your book. I thought that was actually a really smart line. It's like, oh yeah, that makes perfect. Like some people like to manage people. But that was- <laughs> You know, that's fine. Great. Carry on. And that was always one of my things. I guess one of my subconscious, although it's not, I'm talking about now, so it's not subconscious. One of my ideas about growing and, and being successful, like, oh yeah, but I've got to deal with people. And I love people, don't get me wrong, but not like having to organize them. But so when I read that, I was like, oh, oh, that's another way of doing it. Oh, that's, you know, I yeah. like that. I don't want to be promoted out of the work I like into a position of management. Mm. 
not. Some people are great at that. I know some people who are brilliant people managers. Yeah. That's not me. I'm the worst. <laughs> <laughs> it's good that you know that about yourself. If I'm making dinner and my wife is like, how can I help? I'm like, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know how to make the dinner. I don't know how to do for people. Oh, I like it. That's very good. You talk a lot about resilience in your book as well. And it's one of my bounce back abilities, one of my things. I love it. So have you got any tips for those days when everything, I know we already talked a little bit about this, about, you know, paying attention to your body, but what about if you've left it too late and you, you hit a wall? What do you do? And perhaps you never hit walls because you're very good at listening to yourself now. But imagine that you're somebody who hits walls sometimes. What bounce back ability tips have you got for people or to get themselves back up again? Yeah, so the resilience is three traits. So the first is accepting reality because we can't control everything regardless mm. of what Gary Vee tells us. <laughs> yeah. Control of most things in our life. We're not in control of most things in business. Mm. Like, it's, just, it's just a fallacy that we can control things. So we need to accept the reality that we don't have control over a lot of things mm. that helps us be more resilient. Second thing is to have a sense of purpose, like a greater sense of just, I just want to make money or <laughs> I want to never be stressed out in my life because having a sense of purpose will get you through those days when mm -hmm. you feel like you've hit a wall or days when you're super stressed out or days when clients are just pissing you off. <laughs> if you have a sense of purpose, then you can, you can, you can imagine that, Today sucks, but I'm still moving towards yes, what yes. I want to be moving towards in life. So it's okay to have a crappy, I have crappy days all the time, but I know <laughs> that in yeah. general, I'm moving in a direction I like. Mm -hmm. So that's good. The third is an ability to adapt. Mm -hmm. So everything changes. We've already established that we don't really have control over very many things. Yeah. We need to be able to adapt because like markets change customers change tactics change like everything's changing all the time mm. and i mean i've been doing this for 20 years so i kind of take a long-term view of things mm. and it's really just my ability to adapt that's kept me relevant <laughs> for for this long and i mean uh, uh, and the and coupled with the ability to adapt is mm. the idea that we have to keep learning like mm. i spend hours and hours a week learning new things because I feel like I keep wanting to be relevant. I keep wanting to improve my abilities. I keep wanting to grow the knowledge that I have. Mm. And I think resilience needs those things. Resilience needs accepting reality, having a sense of purpose and the ability to adapt that's coupled with learning. Otherwise it's hard. Yeah. Like business is hard in general, right? Like it's mm. just, it's hard to, it's hard to run a business, but we can make it easier by doing those sorts of things. Yeah, totally. Oh, I love that. That's brilliant. And actually you're, the learning piece of course taps into the growth mindset. Like if you accept they're always learning, you know, that equally plays out. That's brilliant. Is there anything else that we haven't talked about that you feel, because you know your book better. I've already told you before we started recording, I haven't quite finished it yet. Anything else that you would love to share that we haven't touched on yet before we draw to a close? Well, we have touched on it, but I think it's worth mentioning again, is that this hustling, busy mindset mm. just isn't, isn't doable long term, even if you think it is, even if you think you're a machine, even if you think you can just power through things, mm. it's not a smart long term strategy. So if I'm busy a little bit of the time, that's okay because mm -hmm. I'm not in control of everything. So, some mm -hmm. like the day of a product launch, I'm going to be busy. There's, yeah. just, <laughs> there's going to be a hundred emails in my inbox that I'm going to have to deal with. I'm just going to be busy, but. If I'm busy and having to hustle all of the time mm. and I'm not prioritizing things right, maybe I'm saying yes to too many things. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to be able to have a balance. And I don't think it's a day, like a work-life balance as a daily thing. I think it's more of like a long-term thing. Like mm -hmm. if I'm working really hard one week, then I'm hopefully not working really hard another week. Mm. I'm just going to burn out and, or I'm just going to get stressed or I'm just going to hate my business. And if my business is my business, then it's my fault. Yes. If I don't, like my, boss, if I don't like my boss and I'm the boss. <laughs> yeah, that's so true. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, no, that's very true. I'm glad that, yeah, I love it. I'm going to have lots of anti-hustle hashtags, which you'll never see because you're not on Instagram, but you won't care. It won't matter. Your message will make memes of that because I love it. Yes, so we take down, we shan't name that man again, but yeah. So tell people where they can find you. We're going to show notes and links and whatever, um, because you've got fulljarvis.com, but the, we've also got, I forgot, is it companyofone.com? Um, 
of one.co. So O F O N E dot C O is a book website. Perfect. My website is pjrvs.com. I don't have pauljarvis.com. I never bothered <laughs> registering it and then somebody else registered it. Oh well. Yeah, so I write the Sunday Dispatches newsletter, which we've been talking about. That's a once a week on Sunday, oddly enough, because it's called the Sunday Dispatch. <laughs> Apart from in the summer when you take the summer off, which I think is brilliant. <laughs> also take uh december off people are too busy around the holiday so i don't want to add to that so That's fair I enough. yeah i love it it's brilliant you're like the epitome of well you know just do how you want to do it and it's all rock and roll like you know excellent it's been so fun to, to talk to you and thank you so much for this and like i say we will be linking to the book and the website and all the other bits and pieces and you on twitter <laughs> the one place where you are on yeah, in the show notes as well but thank you so much for being here and the book is out what date in january january 15th in the States and 17th uh, in England. Ah, and the rest of the UK. Wales and Scotland too. <laughs> no, if it, I'm sure it is. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure it's probably out everywhere in the UK, Australia, India, and a few other places. So yeah. I have two different publishers. Ah, but yeah. The North American one is the 15th, and the other one I think is around the 17th. It's about the same. I was being slightly naughty because I know Americans and Canadians have a little bit of a problem with England versus the UK. It was just me. Well, well, I, am, I am. Like, my family is all from there. <laughs> oh, well, there we go. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I know how that all works. <laughs> okay. I was just teasing you, really. So. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you won't want to come again. But thank you so much. It's been absolutely wonderful. And I, like I said, buy his book or pre-order the book. Is there a week in particular when it's best you know, for, like, boosting sales and stuff? Any time before the 15th. Oh, because yeah. all of the sales before that count on day one. Amazing. Right, good. So between now and then, pre-order the book, and then we can make it a number one bestseller on the day of launch in the northern part of America. And then two days later, the rest of us. <laughs> Thank you so much, Paul. It's been absolutely delightful. Thanks, Al. <laughs> Ta-da.